our classically trained bakers. Today we meet our competition. We do. The self-taught bakers. I know they're probably some of the best of the best, and they have to show up, because we are. Oh, Just by the looks of them, they look like self-taught bakers. Us classically trained look so professional. <laughs> he who cast the first stone, all that, you know, go away. I don't have time for your nonsense. So they are the best. But you can be, you know, the best of your class if your class is like Welcome, teams. Finally, you've merged and begin the battle towards the $100,000 prize. Before we get to the baking, say hi to our judges, the Beyonce of cake artists, Yolanda Gay. And the Curtis Stone of celebrity chefs, Curtis Stone. And tonight, we have a very special guest judge. She's a struggling recording artist who has only managed to sell a meager 23 million albums. Please welcome Martina McBride. Martina McBride, she's a country music legend. She's a foodie too, like those are two of my favorite combinations. Martina, you're not only a country star, but also a kitchen star with your own cookbooks and cooking shows, quite a diverse empire. What will you be looking for in our bakers? I think, you know, for me, baking is about joy. And so I'm just looking for something that has a lot of flavor and makes me happy. Great, Martina, you set the challenge this week. All right, at first glance, it may seem simple, but there is some serious technique involved if you want to execute this perfectly. As always, your job is to find the clues and recreate the mystery bake as best you can. Up first is the safety bake. Fatty and T, start your search. Each team will get two minutes to examine the same clues. Whoever wins this round will skip the elimination bake, advancing directly to our quarterfinals. Here we go. Unless someone was an actual detective before they then went to pastry school, I'm just saying, we're front runners. I see some fruit, butter. I find a grater with butter. I think we're doing rough puff. The only thing I know of that you grate butter for is rough puff pastry. So rough puff, a rough puff is a technique to make a quicker version of puff pastry. It just won't take two days. Number of turns are on the saran wrap. There are tally marks. When you're doing rough puff, you need to count how many folds you put in the dough. Foil. I go to the compost and I see peels. Oh, apples, it's apples, apples, apples. There's so many desserts that use apples, like apple pie, apple turnover, apple galette. There's brown sugar. I find brown sugar on the island and I'm thinking maybe we're making caramel. Wait, why is this out? Why is this out? Look, we saw the half sheet tray with the parchment. Look, come, 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 come. It could be a caramel apple galette because it's made with puff pastry and it's baked on the half sheet tray. Nothing on the board. There's a... I open the trash can. There's something there. There's a squishy situation. This is caramelized fruit. And of course, because it was round, I think apple, smell that. A dead giveaway for me is the caramelized apple that Cherry gave me. Caramel. And the ring of caramel around the uh, cake stand. stand. Tarte tan. A tarte tan is when you caramelize the fruit in a pan and then you put the cold pastry on top and then throw it into a hot oven so that the whole thing bakes together. And then you flip it and that's how you serve it. Yeah. Okay, okay. I see a skillet. I'm thinking apple tart, like I'm, I'm ready to look for a dish to make a tart. Look, look, I have a cake stand here. Cake stand, ça sent quoi? Le caramel? Caramel. It smells like caramel. C'est une tatin. What do we have over here? What is this? It smells like caramel. Oh, it is caramel. Okay. What is this? What's this? I, I don't know. Hello. Like. What is this? It's like a caramel. This is a good clue. A tarte tan would leave something like that on a cake stand. Mm -hmm. Apples, pears. Um, I have peels. Looks like okay. pear peels. OK, yeah. If it's a pear, this might be the pear. Yeah, it's a pear. But yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. It's a pear. Apple, apple, apple. It's apple. Look, look, look. I already looked at that. 10, Ten seconds. seconds. Can you just confirm that this is a green apple peel? I think it is. Smell this. Green yeah. apple, pear. All right, that's time. All right, we destroyed the kitchen. You'll now have two hours and 15 minutes for your mystery bake. Ready? Ready? Guess. Yes. Bake! No! I think we do the galette. Fill it with apple pie filling. So you want to do it 
on the half sheet pan. I know we saw that. It could be a caramel apple galette because we saw the half sheet tray with the parchment. A galette is baked outside of a dish, so let's just do the galette. So a galette is an exposed pie. It just has folded crust on the outside and the filling in the middle. I can't think of anything else with puff pastry. For this safety bake, we're making a caramel apple galette with a buttery, flaky, crispy crust. I made a galette before in culinary school. If we get it wrong, then that's on me, but I need to stick to what my gut is saying. That pedestal dish uh -huh. had caramel in it, so we need to figure out what could be round on a plate with some caramel for a sure. A tart tartan is what I'm thinking. I don't know what that is. It's some fancy thing that I saw on a British show and I've never made it, never eaten it, but we making it today. So the laminated dough with some apples, is that what the tart tartan is? Shoot. I just want to beat the classically trained bakers. I bet those culinary people are going to know it. The clues in the crime scene kitchen led me to believe we're supposed to be making an apple tart tartan. But nothing in this crime scene kitchen has been classic or traditional or anything. The skillet in the dishwasher was, is the proof that this is an apple tatin. It's one of the only cake that you actually bake in the skillet in the oven. This is a dessert that I have done many times, so I'm confident. For this safety bake, we're making a green apple tart tatin. Laisa and Camille. Hello, Joe. Uh oh, we're. <laughs> I Somebody's guess it's hiding. Just... Hey, guys, it's Hi. Martina McBride, Hi. country Hi. music Hi. legend. Martina has had her own show. And you make what's called a fluff salad. It's weird. You take some pimento cheese, then you mix in half a package of miniature marshmallows, Cool Whip, and a pineapple. And it's actually more like a dessert, but we call it a salad because... <laughs> to feel better about it. What is pimento cheese? I think, I think cheese? in the jars. A cheese in a jar? <laughs> I'm French. Cheese is camembert. So what kind of crust are you making? Um, so I'm just making a rough puff, which is why I'm grating the butter in so that we can do those six turns, get those nice flaky layers. Because of the clues in the crime scene kitchen, we are making a caramelized apple tart to ten. Now that we're merged with the classically trained bakers, they're going to know how to do this like the back of their hand. And so we just have to make sure that we have the best tart to ten, and it is beautiful when we present it. So in the compost bin, I see what looks like Hair peels. Okay. Because of the skins, because of the puff. For this safety bag, we are making a non traditional pear tart to ten. We're classically trained, so I'm very familiar with a tart to ten. We want to show, you know, the self taught why we are who we are, and I know they want to do the same thing. I think we got it with the pear. Okay. So when we stand up in front of the judges, this is a pear galette. No, a pear okay. tart. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not saying that. It's like, stop trying to set us up. <laughs> I've never actually made tart to ten. What fruit is it, though? Presence of apples and the circle on the cake pan of the caramel. I think it's an apple tart to ten. Because of the clues we see in the crime scene kitchen, we're making an apple tart to ten. This is a classic French yeah. dish. This is probably something most students in culinary school do. So I anticipate that many of them will be able to do it better than us. I mean, that's the thing. is like a tarte de is technical. Oh, hi, Fatty and T. Hello. 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 Can I introduce Hello. to you hi. Martina McBride? Hi, Martina. <laughs> I'm going to hug you, but I have flour all that's over my okay. hand. So. I'm super excited to see Martina McBride. My mom immigrated here to the United States and taught herself English by watching TV and listening to music, so Martina's music filled our home. Are you okay with the shirts they're wearing, Martina? They can You guys are fun, I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> I assume this might be the eighth time you've cooked for a country music legend. Um, first and delighted, so thank you. Great to see you guys. No matter what happens, so tasty. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Papa Joel. The key to a great tart to pan or galette, and like everything in baking, is how you make it. Whether you're classically trained or self-taught, what matters is your execution and your flavour. We're really going to quickly see where the great bakers are, and then our teams will start understanding who they're really up against. That looks so good. When you take a tart tartan out of the oven, it could look perfect, but once you flip it upside down, if that skillet comes off and it crumbles, yeah. there's no going back. We have so much writing on this bag. We're going up against the classically trained chefs, and we have never made it before. 
everything is relying on how this dessert flips. We're done. We totally screwed it up. Once you lift that pan, if it's not right, you can't put it back in and try it again. We have to deal with that nightmare. Um, I think we should just start rolling. We have to improvise this one. I think these need 40 minutes in the oven. It could so easily go wrong. <laughs> like, no time to think and all time to work. If we flip out this dessert and it capsizes, yeah. we're done. This is an extra special Crime Scene Kitchen. We have Martina McBride here. Hi. So guys, how are our newly merged bakers getting on with Martina's Safety Bake? We've got five tarts of tarns coming out today. It's very brown. Hopefully it's done. Mom, you did a good job on the puff pastry. Yeah, I hope it's the right freaking thing. Let's talk about Fatty and Tea. Well, Fatty and Tea had a disaster turning over their tarts of tarn, and they've started again. It's a risky move with so little time left. So Amber and Yez are making a pear tart to tan. They're the only ones to be doing it. They think they saw cooked pear in the crime scene kitchen. You can close it. If they're right, they're the only ones to pick up on that clue, and then they're going to be safe. Galette is coming out. Sherry and Sally, they're making an apple galette. Are they the only team not making a tart de tan? They are. Mm. So that's either brilliant or horribly wrong. If they're right, they'll win safety and be the first team through to the quarterfinals. One minute left. Ready? One, One two, three, go. Whatever your background, the key moment with a tart to tan is the flip, as Fatty and T have found out. If your pastry isn't tucked in and your fruit isn't caramelized enough, your bake could be ruined along with your chance of safety. It's out, it's out. Okay, it's beautiful. There we go. Woo! Come on, boo. I don't think I breathed for the last few seconds. She good? Yes. Yes, yes, it's great. There you go. There's a lot of question marks underneath that pan. Hockey ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Vegetables. Mm, Are you mm, kidding mm, me? Five, four, three, two, one, and that is time! That is time! Fingers. Martina McBride would like you to step away from your dessert. Martina, the safety bake is complete. Are you ready to taste? So ready. Good. Here we go. We'll start with our self-taught teams. Steph and Cherry, we would love to try your dessert. Now that we're merged with the classically trained bakers, we're going up against the best of the best. We're really nervous about what these bakers can do. It's pretty flat. We're not impressed with Steph and Cherry's tart. It looks undercolored and flat. We've made you a green apple tart to tan with a rough puff pastry. Maybe it is a tart to tan. What clues in the kitchen made you decide to create this tart to tan? We saw the caramelized apple in the trash. It looked like pear to me. The saute pan in the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. The crust is nice and flaky. Mm -hmm. And throughout, even underneath, it remains flaky, which is really excellent. <laughs> Thank you. The pastry, it is wonderful. Yeah, it is so flaky and lovely. The caramelization is nice and kind of chewy. And, and I like the crust, too. Fatty and tea. We made a apple tart to tan uh, with a rough puff pastry crust. How confident are you that that was a pear, people? I'm confident. How confident are you? <laughs> it's the first time you've made this. It is. First, but hopefully not the last. It's very tasty, and the dough is perfect. It tastes wonderful. One thing that you've done really well is you've tucked the edges of your pastry in and around those apples, so you've given a really nice lip to the tart. Yeah, that that was really hard. A, it, it is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yay! Tarsha and Christy. That's very well caramelized. There's a lot riding on this dish, and now we're up against the classically trained chefs, so we really got to step up our game. It's an apple tart tartan with a rough puff pastry crust. But it could have been an apple. The apples 
I do think they're a little soft for a tartar champ, but the way that you spice them and the caramel, I could eat a bowl full of that on mm -hmm. ice cream. It's so good. I'm a little concerned about the thickness of your pastry. Like anything you cook with rough puff, And if an apple tart tartan was made in the crime scene kitchen, then it's really going to come down to a taste test and which one's executed the nicest. So, good luck. Our self-taught bakers seem to be flying high. They're not weighed down with an abundance of knowledge and second-guessing themselves all the time. They seem very creative and free. I think it'd be a big mistake if our classically trained bakers underestimate the self-taught bakers. Here we go. It's our classically trained teams. Amber and Yaz. We're going up against the home bakers, and we have to bring our A game. We have made a pear tart to ten. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only ones so far that have done pear. Might be the thing. I believe that I saw pear peels in the compost bin. If it's pear and not apple, check out. There's crust. Like, you want to just pick it up and eat it with your fingers. Like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. It is beautifully cooked. The wonderful thing here is if you have a look at the piece of fruit that I've cut through, you can still really see the texture in it. Did she love just... Did she did it I you love my you? job. That's yes. it. Swing your feet. Guys, if you're the only ones to detect pear in the crime scene kitchen, and you're right, you'll be going straight through to the quarterfinals. Laisa and Camille. <laughs> That looks so good. Wow. This is a green apple tartatin. That's how you say it. <laughs> say it again. C'est une tartatin aux pommes vertes. Have you guys made one of these before? Yes. I like the fact that your apples have stayed on the tart side. I was just gonna say, they feel fresh. But I do wish there was more of an amber deep caramel on top. We do too. It's gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. All in all, this is a very classically trained um, execution. If it turns out to be an apple tart to tan, there's four of you that made it, and we're really gonna have to concentrate on the taste and see who followed all of the clues and also who made the best tasting tart to tan. So it's gonna come down to an apple or pear. Sherry and Sally. Last time we were in the kitchen, we won that safety bake, and we're hoping we get the safety bake again. It's so pretty. Oh my God, it's so caramelized. Today we have made you guys a caramel apple galette. Galette. We always got to wonder if they saw another clue. It's beautiful. Mm. Thank you. What made you think that a caramel apple galette was made in the crime scene kitchen? So we found apple filling in the trash, and then Sally saw a hash mark on the puff. saran wrap. Yeah. So that leads us to a puff pastry because there's butter on the grater. What did I miss? I don't know. There's so much flavor in the mm -hmm. filling. Or the crust along the edge is amazing, especially with the addition of the sugar. Mm -hmm. Got gorgeous color around the outside of your galette. The fruit is beautifully caramelized. This fruit filling is delicious. Thank you. It has like a lot of depth of flavor. What you guys have to pray for is that a galette is what came out of that crime scene kitchen. They could be right. Our newly merged bakers have presented us with four apple and one pear tart to tan and one galette in this safety bake. There's just one thing to figure out. How have I put on so much weight? Also, who got closest to Martina's mystery dessert? We'll find out after this. Welcome back to Crime Scene Kitchen. Here's where things stand. We have four apple tartatons, we have one pear tartatan, and we have one caramel apple galette. Whoever does best in this bake is safe from elimination and goes straight through to the quarterfinals. And Steph and Charity have won all three of their safety bakes so far. Can they make it four? Now it's time to find out what's inside the semi-gloss painted box of secrets. Confectionator 3000, reveal Martina's mystery dessert. 
What is it? Come on, Galette. Come on, Galette. Come on, Galette. Galette. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? I hope we get safety again, because I don't know how to live otherwise. <laughs> be a pair. Just be a pair. Apple. Apple. Is it a tattoo? The mystery dish is a tart tatin. Buttery, caramelized apples baked under a flaky puff pastry. We got it right. Self-taught. <laughs> never made a tart to 10 before. Nope. And we did the job. Damn, we should have made that. I know. We're classically trained, but maybe the self-taught bakers have pretty good detective skills. Curtis, what clues should they have uncovered? Here's what they should have seen in the crime scene kitchen. The flour, grate it with butter, and use plastic wrap with tally marks, suggesting a rough puff pastry was made. The peelings in the compost clearly indicated apple as a core ingredient. This girl right here said, I know it's a pear. A key clue was the large size of the caramelized apple in the trash. That, along with the oven-proof skillet and caramel remnants, clearly indicated this bake as the French classic tart to tongue. I knew I missed the dishwasher. Sherry, sorry. OK, judges, who came closest to the mystery dessert? On balance, one edged out the others. The winners of the safety bake are... Fatty and T. Get over here. <laughs> we got saved here. He needs a moment. So it's a win for our self-taught bakers. Fatty and T, congratulations. This is the first safety bake you've won. It was about time. You advance straight into the quarterfinals and will not have to compete in tonight's elimination bake. So you guys can head to safety. Congrats. <laughs> Fatty and T. Quarterfinals, quarterfinals, quarterfinals. Martina McBride, thank you for being our guest judge. <laughs> Country music legend Martina McBride, everyone. Time now for the elimination bake, which is the least popular bake because of the whole, you know, elimination thing. Yolanda, you devised this mystery dessert. The crime scene kitchen is once again open for your investigation. Here we go. Amber and Yaz, start your search. Each team will get the same amount of time to examine the same clues. What do we see? What do we see? There's AP flour that's on here. There's five eggs. On the island, there is five eggs that have clearly been used. There's some milk, and there's a little bit of flour. What are we making? All right, look at this. Look at this. What is that? What's there's, down there? It's a dustpan. It smells like a crepe batter or something. And it smells like crepe batter. There are also tick marks on it. I got a blender. I got a blender. What are you thinking? What are you seeing? Well, maybe the blender is used to make the crepe batter. You do use a blender. We're going to make crepes. This is a pastry cream. This is pastry cream. We've got vanilla open. This smells exactly like uh, vanilla pastry cream. There's something on this batch of the, that looks like chocolate. One, two, three, four, five eggs. One stick of butter, all-purpose flour, milk. The flour, the butter, the eggs. There are so many things you could use those ingredients for, and it could be a cake. In the dishwasher, we hit the mother load. This thing. Crepe pan. We're making crepes. But there's also a cake cream. It's a crepe cake. I think it's a crepe cake. I've seen a little bit about crepe cakes. You take several different layers of crepes and put some kind of filling in between, and you stack it up to look just like a cake. Wait, did you see this? Did you see this? I picked up the crumpled piece of Post-it. What's on it? Crepe batter. Uh -huh. um, one, two, three, four, five, six, 30. Six little groups of five hash marks. That's 30, 30 crepes. One, Count. two, three, four, five, six, That's 30. 30. You have to make 30 crabs. But it says 30. It's one, two, three, four, five. Six times five is 20. Sally, we have four, four plates. I head to the dishwasher and I see four plates. And I'm realizing that we have to serve this crepe cake to four guests. Les crêpes, crêpes de chocolat. 
Regarde, 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 regarde. Oh, look at the oh, look at the round. It's round. Look, where the chocolate here. Look, all the round. Mm. I think the canache can be spread because of the offset spatula that I saw, and it also can be poured because of the cooler going to the drips. So I'm not sure. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot! There's not much time left. Ganache. Okay, okay, okay. Flour, milk, chocolate. And that is time. That is time. The crime scene kitchen is closed for the night. You'll now have two and a half hours to create the mystery dessert. And the team who performs worst overall will be eliminated from the competition. It is so important that we don't get eliminated tonight. We need to step up our game. We need to amp up our twin telepathy because we need to win this elimination round and get to the next stage. You'll now have two and a half hours to create the mystery dessert. Ready? Guess. Bake! Is that too much? Always. Thank you. I know that we're making crepe cakes. After seeing the crepe pan and the cake ring in the dishwasher, everything else makes sense. So I know that we're gonna be making a crepe cake. The only problem is I don't know how many layers we're supposed to make. Did you see the paper in the dustpan? No, did you? Mm -hmm. What was it? It was just a post-it note with uh, tally marks. Six, five, so it's 20. And I'm thinking that's how many crates we have to make for each. <laughs> I missed it. Now we know. We're going to make a 20-layer crepe cake with vanilla pastry cream in the filling and chocolate ganache glaze all over it. In the dishwasher, I see the ring cake pan, a dust pan with post-its equal up to 30. And then with that ring mold, I'm thinking a crepe cake. We think we're gonna make a 30-layer crepe cake filled with diplomat cream, which is pastry cream that's been lightened with whipped cream and topped with chocolate ganache. And maybe put a little magic in it. Just a, just a touch, just a touch. The crepe batter could have been made inside of the blender to yep. blend oh, it Oh yeah, it was the freaking blender. That was a blender. Oh, yes! <laughs> she saw the blender. Did you just do the blender dance? I did do the blender dance. Let me see the blender dance so we can do it. Is <laughs> it blender? That pan tells me it's a crepe cake. But you now we have to think over. about how we're layering this. It's going to be ganache, pastry cream, ganache, pastry cream. We're not sure how we're going to like fill our crepes or how we're going to cover our crepes. So right now, we're just going to stick with the ganache and pastry cream filling. The only thing is there wasn't anything to show how we're gonna design it, but I think since those four plates, that's how we're supposed to present it, right? We serve the four plates, I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm not totally sold on this idea, but Sherry's just, she's really determined about those four plates. Everything that's been in the dishwasher has been used. So we have to serve four plates. This is gonna be an insane operation, but it's basically, you make a crepe, I put it in the freezer, it chills, it comes back out. Like, it gets a layer and it goes back in the fridge and back out and back in and back out. Now that it's our first time in the elimination bake, I'm feeling so nervous. Who knows how it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. We're setting the crepe cake with the pastry cream layers and then we are going to pour the ganache over it. Based on the pastry cream on the stove, the ring of chocolate on the drying rack, we concluded that we are making a 30 layer crepe cake with diplomat cream and glazed with chocolate ganache. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, that looks so good, though. No, it's not. I don't know how to do this. 90 minutes remaining. Plenty of time to question your recipe, your partner, and your choice of vocation. Are you still counting? Uh-uh. That was two more. It has to be exactly 20. OK. Camille and Laisa. OK, so what do you got here? What are you making there? So it's a crab cake filled with pasty cream. So it's a cake of crepes? Yes. For this elimination bake, we are making a 30 layers crepe cake filled with vanilla pastry cream and covered with a chocolate ganache. Is there anything I can do? Get out of here. Oh, I'm staying now for another 30 minutes. All the teams are making crepe cakes. So if the mystery dessert is a crepe cake, then it's going to come down to every single detail. The crepes, the filling they've chosen. Curtis and I have no choice but to judge based on taste and execution. Crepes are so technical. Even though we're classically trained, I don't make crepes a lot. If I do make crepes, it's like one or two, and that's it. I'm not making a crepe cake. I think this is the first time where we're like crunching on time. 
We don't have time because the most important thing is to have 30 layers of crepes. These crepes take forever. We only have four. We're running out of time, running low on crepes. It's just gonna come down to like the last second. You gotta get this done, Sally. minutes remaining, 30 minutes. We're doing 30 layers of crepes, right? And then the rest, we're just filling in with the ganache pastry cream? Yes. I hope this is the right way to do this. I get to about six or eight layers, and I'm telling Sherry, like, are you sure this is what we're supposed to put in the filling? And I remember the only thing I saw on this offset was chocolate. The only time you use the big offset spatula is when you frost a, a cake. Maybe it was covered in ganache. That would make sense. So I'm talking to Sherry and I say, we have to do the layers with pastry cream and whipped cream and ganache on the outside. And we literally don't have enough time to make more crepes. Let's just stay calm. I'm gonna make more batter, you just work on that. So right now we're making a 30 layer crepe cake filled with pastry cream and covered in dark chocolate ganache and served on four plates. Here we are, elimination round. T and Fatty took home the safety bake and are sitting pretty right now. What's everyone doing? All of the teams think the mystery dessert is a crepe cake with chocolate and pastry cream. So it's going to come down to the tiniest of details as well as taste and execution. Tarsha and Christy are the only team making a 20 layer crepe cake, not 30. And Sally and Sherry are the only team planning to serve their cake in slices rather than whole. Sally and Sherry have changed track. They were layering each crepe with ganache. They've stopped doing that and they've made the decision to use the ganache over the top. I just don't think they're gonna get a cake in front of us. Sure, what's the time? 7.19, I'm out of cream. We're running out of time and we're running out of pastry cream and whipped cream. Oh, it's gonna burn the cake. I'm out of cream. I know, but are you at 30 layers? No. Okay, we're at six minutes. Where the f are our plates? One minute remaining. Why do you have to smooth it? Because it's not smooth. This is an ordeal. Sometimes I do get paid to do this. You stressed? A little bit. No, not like that. Nine, eight, eight seven, three, six, three, three, five, four, three, two, one, and that is time. That is time. Step <gasps> away from the desserts. Woo! We can't do anything about it now. We know we put our heart into it, and we're OK with whatever the outcome is. We got this far. We did the best we could. We know we could have done a lot better. Fatty and T, you are safe, but join us for the tasting. Camille and Laisa. It'll be perfect. Now we're going against classically trained bakers, and they probably make these types of things every day of the week. Wow. What do we have here? A 30-layer crepe cake filled with pastry cream and covered with dark chocolate ganache. 30 layers. And what clues in the kitchen made you decide to create this? We found in the dishwasher a whisk, and we saw the crepe pan at the very back of it. We saw an offset spatula with a chocolate ganache. And what made you decide on 30? We found a note under the sink in the dustbin with marks, and it was 30 of them. There were six sets of five tally marks that equaled up to 20. That's on 30. The... What? That's 30. I counted 20. Christy! The texture of your crepes and the thinness is really, really nice. It's a wonderful crepe recipe. You can tell it has a really nice texture. Good job. Thank you. Tarsha and Christy. Wow. We are going home. We're going home. Look at that. Did everyone ignore the plates? We have a 20-layer crepe cake with chocolate ganache covering and vanilla pastry cream filling. Mm -hmm. Is it 20? Yeah. I may have misread something in the crime scene kitchen. I was looking at the sticky note that was under the sink in the dustpan, and I may have miscounted. At least we know how to count. We counted this one, right? Yes. Hmm. 
Personally, I love the flavour of pastry cream. I might have liked just a little bit more in between each crepe, but it, it really is a delicious cake. Especially when you get a bit of everything in a bite, the chocolate ganache, the pastry cream, and the crepes. Of course, there's a big difference between a 20 layer and a 30 layer. Who knows what was made in that crime scene kitchen, even if it was a crepe cake. That remains to be seen. Steph and Cherry. That's a big boy. There's definitely 30 layers. We're feeling iffy about how it looks. Yeah, it's our first time in the elimination bake, so I hope it's not our last. We have made a 30 layer crepe cake with diplomat cream glazed with chocolate ganache. What happened here with the presentation? It was meant to be a drip, but um, it kind of ended up being exactly in between. Your crepes are really even. So is the way you spread the cream. Your chocolate ganache is delicious. Thank the you. elements are certainly there. The ratios are wonderful, so it tastes much better than it looks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank it's you great. So much. It's Amber and Yaz. They didn't cover the sides. It's 30 layers. <gasps> wow. We have a 30 layer crepe cake. I'm be sick. Filled with a pastry cream, topped with um, dark chocolate ganache. There's one that they miss. Why is there four plates? You need to serve four. It's just a thing of beauty. It's so even, it's wonderful. And your ganache has a beautiful shine. Mm -hmm. To me, I just see that classical training, and I'm like, OK, they know what they're doing. And it tastes so wonderful. And the ratio of pastry cream to crepe is just exquisite. Thank you. It Thank you. glorious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sally, Sherry, are you hiding something? The four plates. Oh, OK. Yeah. They slice yeah. Oh, they okay. cut them. It's a disaster. Like, it's so embarrassing to have to serve this to the judges. Sorry. Um, we made a 30-layer crepe cake filled with pastry cream, whipped cream, and covered in dark chocolate ganache. Since Sherry saw the four plates in the dishwasher, we decided to cut the cake last minute and add it on the plates. I mean, it makes sense, but... Is that the whole cake, or was there more that you didn't see? There's more. Do you want to bring it out for us? I mean, it makes a lot yeah. of sense, actually. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing I too, yeah. yeah. We all thought about it, I think. Here's our cake. Did it cross your mind we shouldn't cut it, or are you glad that you did? I feel like, why would there be four plates in the dishwasher? There's no cake stand. I'm going to throw up if it slices that come out. I don't get enough pastry cream. Although they're all even, they feel a little on the gummy side. And along the top, I mostly taste ganache because all of the filling up there mm -hmm. has dissolved with that heat. But. If four slices of a 30-layer crepe cake was what you were supposed to serve from that crime scene kitchen, it might even mean that you're totally safe from elimination. We're hoping and praying that there's four plates in that confectionator. And if there are four plates in the confectionator, then we know for a fact that we're not going home tonight, even though it doesn't look perfect. Welcome back to Crime Scene Kitchen. So here's where things stand. Three teams made a 30-layer chocolate crepe cake. Sally and Sherry cut their 30-layer cake into four portions. And Tarsha and Christy were the only team to make a 20-layer cake. At this point... <laughs> ...to my family and friends for that joke. The team that does the worst will be eliminated and won't make it to the quarterfinals. Confectionator 3000, reveal the mystery dessert. We are praying right now to the pastry gods that we got this right. Come on, four plates, four plates. Look at it. It's not four plates. The mystery dessert is 30 crepes filled with velvety cream diplomats surrounded by a layer of chocolate ganache. Does that make you sick every time you hear it? Yolanda, what should they have unraveled in the crime scene kitchen? The short walled pan in the dishwasher, the remnants of the pastry cream combined with the cake ring strongly indicated a crepe cake. 
The used cooling racks and offset spatula suggested that the cake was coated in chocolate ganache and the height of the crepe cake. The tally mark adding to 30 was an indication of 30 layers needed for the cake. I'm gonna throw up, for real. We are going home. The four plates in the dishwasher, along with the mugs, were clearly unused and therefore not part of the mystery dessert. In addition, there was no evidence of a knife to cut the cake. Oh. Those, Those damn plates. plates. <laughs> oh. And now, the very tough part, who is going home tonight? Tasha and Christy, your cake was correct in almost every aspect, except you were missing 10 crepes, a third of the overall cake. Sally and Sherry, you decided to serve four slices of your cake, and your presentation and execution was sloppy. Unfortunately, the team going home tonight is... Sally and Sherry. We did good. I love you. Sally and Sherry, you've baked such delicious things for us so far in this competition, but tonight just wasn't your night. The time just got the better of you. It's been so fun having you on the show.